Hi, I'm Grace from Canada. Please like and subscribe. I was raised by my single dad and he was the best parent anyone could ask for. He was a lawyer and worked long hours, but he was always there to make me breakfast, take me to school, and give me piggyback rides when we got home. Charge, my trusty horse. Giddy up, giddy up. Throughout my childhood, different people tried to convince dad to get married, but he never agreed. You know every child deserves a mom. Thank you, but I'm perfectly capable of raising Grace. Aha! Take that, nosy people. Dad and I were perfect alone. But as a kid, I struggled to make friends. It turned out that I had social anxiety, and talking to people was a nightmare. Dad said it was because I spent a lot of time alone, but it didn't get easier even after joining school. I always said the wrong things and ended up chasing people away. Like this one time, I saw a girl sitting alone at recess, and I went to talk to her. Hi, I like your dress. It's green like a frog. N not that you look like a frog. Well, maybe you do, but in a good way. What a weirdo. After a while, I stopped trying and became the girl who was always alone and kinda invisible. But then I found company in my books, so it was no surprise that I was a genius at school. My life was really simple. I went to school, topped my grades, and then came home to watch movies with dad. But when I turned 14, everything changed. One evening, we were halfway through dinner when I noticed that dad was sweating nervously. OMG, was he having a heart attack? I pushed him down to the floor and began thumping his chest. Dad, you're gonna be fine. I won't let anything happen to you. I, I'm fine, Grace. I just wanted to tell you, I met someone. Her name is Angela and I wanna marry her. And the best part is, you get a brother and a sister. Wait, what? What are you talking about, Dad? You always said you didn't need any help raising me, so why now? I'm not marrying her to raise you, Grace. I'm marrying her because I love her. Loved her? I was furious. I stormed off to my room and slammed the door shut. Our lives were perfect. Why would Dad want to change anything? A week later, Dad arranged for me to meet Angela and her kids over dinner, and I had the perfect plan to chase them away. I changed the settings of the oven and turned the turkey to flames. No food, no dinner. But Angela, my stepmom, turned out to be a master chef. When she came home, she cooked food for everyone and it was freaking delicious. But I wasn't gonna melt so easily. I kept frowning at her the entire time while her five-year-old son kept blowing raspberries at me. He was so cute. Ugh, focus, focus, Grace. This is a really lovely home and I'm so happy to meet you. Well, sadly, I'm not. Grace, you will be nice to our guests. Apologize right now. I mumbled sorry under my breath and turned my focus to her daughter. Her name was Eva and she kept going around and touching everything. Wow, what a big house and what a shiny sculpture. Don't touch it. It's my dad's favorite and really valuable. Don't you mean our dad, sister? And listen to me carefully. Don't play with me. I'm warning you. What? She gave me the most evil smirk and rubbed her dirty hands all over the sculpture before she ran away smirking. After they left, I told Dad I didn't like Angela and her daughter, but he didn't listen. And a month later, they were married. At their wedding, I was the angriest guest ever, but Eva was happier than the bride. A day after the wedding, Dad came into my room and sat on the bed. I know this is hard for you, Grace but I want you to promise that you'll try to like them. For me, okay? Dad had never asked me for anything before, and his request moved me. So I decided to chin up and try to love my new family. The same day Dad and Angela were supposed to leave for their honeymoon, Dad said their trip was canceled because the sitter they'd arranged wasn't available, and I took this chance to be supportive. I can handle everything here, Dad. You should go. I insisted. How hard could it be to take care of a five-year-old? They agreed and left for the week. And Fred was great, but Eva was a witch. She refused to help and would litter all around the house, thus making me do all the chores by myself. Then one evening I looked out my window and saw Eva yelling at Fred. I rushed outside to his rescue. You idiot! How dare you put a bug on my bed? I, 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 you can't even talk right, you weirdo. She was about to hit him when I came and stopped her. Stop it, Eva. Don't touch him. And don't speak to him like that. Back off. He's my brother, not yours. I'll speak to him any way I like. 
I knew what it felt like for someone to call you a weirdo, so I gave him a hug. You know, I don't think you're weird. In fact, you're the best five-year-old I know. His face lit up and he happily skipped away. I already knew that I was gonna love him so much. And soon enough, he became my first friend ever. And that drove Eva mad. Fred, you know I'm your actual sister and not her. But Fred ran to me and climbed into my lap. Soon enough, our parents came home and Eva joined my school. She instantly became friends with the popular girls and everyone wanted to be close to her. Eva, it's time to go. Ew, who are you? I'm Grace. We've been in the same class since the first grade. Wow, I really never noticed you before. What? All my life, these people made me feel invisible. And Eva walks in and suddenly she has a million friends? One weekend when our parents were away, I heard loud music coming from the backyard. I went to check and found Eva having a huge party in the garage. It seemed like half the school was there. What's going on? I'm having a meet and greet with my new friends. My dad would not like this. He'll only know if you tell. Just then I heard someone say, no way, loser nerd girl is your sister. And that hurt so much. I'd spent so many birthdays alone because these people never came, but they were all here now. I hated that Eva had walked into my life and was living it better than I ever did. So I went to the main controller and I shut down the electricity. The music died and soon everyone left and Eva came screaming at me. But just then our parents came back home and when they saw the mess, Angela was pretty upset. How dare you have a party without asking? You are in trouble, young lady. I'm grounding you for a month. It's all right, Angela. She's just a kid. Ugh, I wish he knew. As soon as dad took her side, Eva turned to all smiles and Angela came to me. I wanted to thank you, Grace. You accepted us as a family and looked after both Eva and Fred. So I got you a present as a token of thanks. It was a beautiful gold necklace. She put it around my neck and for the first time, I noticed how beautiful she was. Maybe she wasn't so bad after all. Hello, where's mine? You're not getting it anymore. I'll sell it and give the money to charity. Eva grew red with anger and she marched to her room. And later that night, she stormed into mine. Look here, you nerd. If you think my mom loves you, you are wrong. She married your dad for his money and that's the only reason she's nice to both of you. So before you get any mommy-daughter fantasies in your head, I thought you should know that. I just tried to ignore her because I knew she was mean to her core. But it annoyed me so much that people still adored her, even my dad. One evening, I came down into the lounge and I saw Eva jumping around happily. Oh my God, we're gonna go see Funky. Funky? It was our favorite band. Dad and I always watched them play when they came to town. Actually, Eva and I are going. I only managed to get the last two tickets and Eva's never seen them play before. What? But that's our thing. This is crazy. You're taking her and not your daughter? Come on, you've seen them a million times and Eva is my daughter too. Stepdaughter? With that, I picked up a picture frame on the shelf and smashed it to pieces. Grace, I am so disappointed. I didn't raise you to be a brat. I didn't care. I was really angry at dad. In fact, I was angry at all of them for changing my life. But it was hard to hate my stepmom. While dad and Eva were at the concert, she took me shopping and we did fun things I never did with dad. One morning I overslept and I was in a hurry to get to school. I was struggling with my hair when she walked into the bathroom and helped me. There you go, you look beautiful. Thank you, Angela. Please call me mom. Mom, I imagined a perfect world where she really was my mom, but my thoughts were interrupted by Eva's voice. Mom, can you leave her ugly hair and help me with mine? Oh, honey, you guys are late. We don't have time for that. Eva went red with anger. Jeez. I was slowly getting used to having a new family, even though I still hated Eva. But then one day, it all came crashing down. I came home from school and went to say hello to mom, but I stopped outside her room when I heard her speak. Darling, we'll leave as soon as we're done selling those sculptures and all the jewelry. I can't wait to get away from this man and his needy daughter. My heart broke. So Eva was right all along. Her mother didn't love me or even dad. I immediately raced downstairs and saw that dad's favorite sculpture was gone. Oh my God. I went out to the driveway and waited for dad to get home. 
Dad, I told you these people are evil. I told him what I'd heard, and it made me so sad to see his heartbroken face. But when we went back inside, the sculpture was back in place. What? I couldn't believe it. And I could already see how disappointed Dad was in me. Wait, Dad, I'm not lying. I heard Angela myself. She's a thief. You think I stole something? I turned around to see Angela, Fred, and Eva standing behind me, looking shocked. But they weren't fooling me anymore. Just stop it. I heard you saying you'll sell Dad's sculptures and leave. You can stop pretending now. All I've ever done since I've come here is love you, but it seems like I'm wasting my time. She turned to Dad and said, I love you, but if your daughter hates me enough to make up lies about me, then maybe we shouldn't be together. I'm leaving. What? Leave? We can't leave. Can we all calm down and talk about this? But her mom had already stormed off, and Eva ran to her. I begged you to try and like them for me, but I guess that was too much to ask. Dad, I'm not lying. Stop it. You got what you wanted. Congratulations. It was the first time Dad had ever yelled at me, and then he walked out. Gracie, you really want us to go? I thought you were my sister. I cried as I hugged him tight and ran away to my room. As they left in their car, I watched them from my window and cried some more. After that, Dad didn't speak to me for a while. Our lives were back to normal, but everything was different. Dad was miserable and so was I. I missed Fred and his mom. Why did they have to turn out to be such terrible people? One day I was in my room when I heard something. I looked outside and it was Eva throwing stones at my window. I marched downstairs angrily to ask her what she wanted, but she held up her hand. Wait, let me speak first. I'm just here to fix things. My mom didn't do anything. I used a fake voice app to make up the thing you heard. What? Are you crazy? Why would you do that? Because I was jealous. I had mom to myself for years, but then Fred came along, and then you, and she likes you better. It was like I kept getting pushed back and no one remembered me anymore. I didn't mean to break them up. I just wanted to hurt you and for you to kind of hate mom. I'm sorry, okay? Please help me make our parents happy again. Weirdly enough, I sort of understood Eva. To be honest, I was jealous of you too. I didn't like sharing my dad. And all the things I found difficult came so easy to you. Next to you, I felt like a freak. Don't say that. You're the smartest person I know. And you may not have friends, but you have a brother and sister who care about you. If you still want them, I could feel tears rolling down my cheeks as we hugged. And I noticed for the first time that she smelled like flowers, just like Angela. Let's go tell our parents about the mess you made. My mom's gonna kill me. Don't worry, I'll save you.